Hello everyone, this is Rick. I'm going to be giving you a quick demonstration on how to use your Chem Labs. I'm going to go through this quicker than you would normally like to see it, um, but uh, uh, the, there are a lot of details on how to take the labs here. I just want to give you a little video overview for those who could benefit from the visuals. So when you when you take a lab, this is what when you start, it'll look something like this, and it's divided into um, mainly two sections for you. On the right, you have this uh, introduction which is the instructions for the lab and then one thing you want to note is that there's a there's a progress bar across the top and it's always divided into intro experimental and discussion the intro is what tells you what you're going to be doing often there will be some math and some background that you need to take note of there experimentals where you take your data and discussions where you do your sort of crunching and you and you calculate things to submit um, down here you can start your lab over uh, you, uh, you can click to certain to certain sections uh, that are allowed, and you can also restart your entire lab. If you restart your entire lab, it erases all of your data. You have to start over completely. Once you've taken data, you can't go back before that step. So you have to, um, once you recorded data, you have to wipe out your whole lab and start over, just like you would in a in a real world lab. You progress by clicking this next bar here. <clears throat> you get supplies by clicking that clicking that supplies cabinet, and this is your workbench here. Everything. That you see here that you can highlight you can it gets a blue that you can move gets a blue outline and you can retype what something is this says zinc here you can click on uh, most things you can click there uh, i guess these particular things you can't you can like for example if i were to click this wire basket here i can drag this to my desktop i can rename this into as i can call it uh, basket uh, number one you can give things their, their own names uh, from the supply cabinet um this is the the analytical balance the door opens and closes and you read these directions there's some important information here that you should you should be careful to uh, pay attention to so um it talks about some left pointing arrows here they're here and here left and right pointing arrows you get three attempts to complete input boxes on a page before continuing the next section it reads that's important the three you can't just go crazy doing stuff and also note that these labs are set up to accept your most recent um, attempt at the lab and you can attempt as many times as you want before the lab is due it takes your most recent submission not the best or the first one the most recent one so um, so I'm not going to do I'm going to give you several of these demonstrations but of course I'm not going to do the labs for you I'm just going to um, to show you how to operate the labs so here I go I'm, I've just passed the intro now I'm, no, I'm into the experimental section my data sheet is going to be unpopulated because I haven't have any data yet now you can record data in a piece on a piece of paper or a notebook as you go along, and it may be easier for many of you, especially if you're doing some work on a um, on a piece of paper by the side. By the way, there's no time limit on these labs, incidentally. Um, so, and it just tells you what to do. It tells you, hey, there's a supplies cabinet over here, and this first section um, is giving you some information about how to do stuff, which I recommend you read. This one is your first manual input box. So this says number of reagent bottles. Reagent bottles, uh, just a bottle of chemicals. There's just one, so you're gonna type the number one, press next, and it submits that. And this is a response. Now sometimes if you do something that just isn't allowed, it'll tell you no, or if it's trying to point you a certain direction, give you some feedback, it'll say yes, so that's good. Uh, now it's going to tell us to tear the balance, which is to click zero on it here. And um, then it's going to tell us to, um, let's see, uh, the, the monitor the fluctuation. I'm looking at, I'm seeing the highest number is, I don't know, 0.003, let's say. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say 0.002. And I'll click enter or next. Um, it's going to tell us how to move stuff. So it's going to say to, uh, it's going to tell us to weigh out some things. It's going to say weigh two grams and, and uh, two ads. So I'm going to get a weight boat here. So this is what it's going to tell us to do. I'm going to drag it. See that's blue to here. And I'm going to click and get a what they call a scoopula. I drag and drop it on this bottle and it scoops up some. And then I drag this over to here. And when it's done correctly, that's blue, and it, and it says, hey, two grams and two adds. Okay, this says shake is one, tap there, I'm going to do two. Okay, what do I do with this thing? I guess I can just leave it there. I'll move it out of the way. Close the door, and then, whoops, it weighs too much. What did I do wrong? I don't know. I did something wrong. Well, here's what I did. 
I'm going to take this out here. I'm going to throw this away. It's because I didn't tear the balance first. And I'm going to put this on here. Close it. Now I'm going to tear it. Now it's, now you'll see that once I give it two, two shakes, it'll be approximately two grams, but not exactly because this is all randomized. Close the door. And now to get this number filled, you'll notice I can't type anything here. I'm going to click record and I'll get a number there. And then I'll click next. And it's going to tell me about doing some other stuff, which I'm not going to do. Then it says, hey, I want you to do the same thing, only um, get, uh, I'm going to just tear this too so I can add more. It says do the same thing, but in, um, do it by tapping 0.1 20 times. Now later it'll ask you to calculate the difference in error um, you get from doing it two different ways. Uh, so I'm going to just tap this 20 times. instructed and then I'm going to move this out of here close the door and record that value and click next no pretty soon I should start seeing some data in my data sheet and here we go this is this is the data I've taken so you can work with this later um, now it's telling me to um, weigh some of these uh, weighing baskets up here I'm going to throw this stuff in the recycle these are baskets I'm going to drag four of them out of here because I happen to know it's going to want us to weigh or three more because I already did um, one. I'm going to rename these so that I can remember which one is which because it's going to ask us if we can determine if there's a difference between the baskets. Three, and I'm going to call this one um, basket four. Basket four. And uh, then you're just going to close the door and tear it and drag a basket onto the balance area, close the door. That one weighs 37.668 something grams. So we're gonna go to the next page here. It was the mask of basket one. We got basket one in there. We're gonna go to record. I'm gonna take it out, close the door. We can tear it again. And then it's gonna ask us the mask. Uh, oh, the basket one the second time. So what it's going to tell us is like once we get it, once we get an idea of the error in weighing one basket, we can um, use this information to tell us how different two baskets must be for us to determine if they're significantly different. And then we're going to do this guy here, aka little Joker. Hold still. All right, there we go. And there we go, fourth time. So. I told you I wouldn't do this in excruciating detail, and I'm sorry, but it, it forces me to go through the same steps you would do for the lab. So um, this one says, first way the same basket you worked with before, which is uh, this guy. And we're going to close that and go next. Now it's going to say basket two. So I'm going to go through this as quickly as possible so that um, you don't have to watch me do this all day. And then I'm going to go to basket three. We're going to go record. And then I'm going to throw this over here. And we're going to go to basket four. And then here we go with that guy. We're going to go next. I'm making a mess out of my lab supplies. Uh, this now, I guess I'm going to get rid of these guys that clean up my stuff. The next, the next thing says to bring out an Erlenmeyer flask. Uh, and basically, I think we're just practicing um, squirting some stuff. This is an Erlenmeyer flask. This this kind of weird one. I'm going to call it uh, flask one. And then it says to using oh use a squeeze bottle. So you drag the squeeze bottle on top of it, and then this thing here is what you do to transfer. You kind of then watch it. Can you see it filling up from the bottom? I'm filling it like I wonder if it'll mess. It'll go all the way to the top. Yep, it's pouring over onto the bench. So there's there's a ton there. So um, you can start over if you want. You can bring this back, and then you can. Um, Get a new flask and kind of practice putting some in there and then i'll just put a little bit so that it's just got a little bit of stuff in it you can see i've got some in there so that's that's all that exercise is these are things that you'll want to do later i'm getting better at this uh let's see um and it talks a little bit about using a pipette too so you can use a pipette to um to move some solution from things and that's you'll let you go through that exercise yourself 
Um, so uh, that's that guy. And then we can, I'm going to skip some of this stuff because I don't think you need to see all of it right now. Uh, this talks about errors. This says the random error average and usually expressed as a percent is, and here's how you read that. The random error of the average is error, the error of one measurement is um, the error in one measurement. So whatever you got for the error in one divided by, and this n to the one half, that means the square root of the number of samples. And usually a little smaller case n means the number of measurements you took. And to the one half power means the square root. It says, um, the example here is that if you had a 10% error, but if you did it five times, the error would be reduced by um, by the square root of five, or the error would then be 4%. So first you have to calculate your random error by, um, you know, like with the baskets, which we measured it lots of times, you take that difference divided by the whole mass. And then if you do it lots and lots of times, you can reduce it by measuring um, the number of samples you took divided uh, the square root of the number of samples you took uh, divided into 10% and that gives you the new the new error so if you want to get a better measurement it's saying you have to take lots and lots of measurements and that gives you a better a lower error so here it's wanting us to do some uh, some math so we knew the 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 value that we we think was the true value here so we say that 2 1 gram was 2 so you take your uh, 0 0.0599 and then it says do the other thing, which is uh, 0 0.0918, 0 0.0918, oops, here, 0 0.0918, and you go next. And then it tells you, you have to pick one of these things. Uh, so this says, by making 20 small additions, you get some number. Um, so I'm just gonna pick one of these and not tell you which the right answer is. And this one you have to solve for this one. It says, oh, if you had 1%, you had 4%, you wanted to get down to 1. How would you do it? I might make a separate video uh, helping you uh, solve that one. But um, this one tells you to get the mean of your um, baskets data. And I don't, I think this forces you to get the right answer. It's going to be like something like 37.78. I don't know exactly. 37.781. I don't know if that's right. Um, and it teaches you how to do the range. It's probably like 0.2 or something. Um, this thing will bark at you if you're like incredibly off, but not if you're pretty close. Ah, the range is the, the largest one minus the smallest one. Um, so you, I'm going to figure that out really quickly for my data. And we'll be different for your data. 8056 minus um, 36 37.66. 8.5 is 0 0.1371, 0 0.1371. Let's see if it lets me go. It is not having it. So um, anyway, the range is the um, the difference between the largest and smallest values. I don't know why it's not accepting that. Oh, because I got I didn't get the right largest and smallest values. Hold on a second. It's 38.8056 minus... Uh, 37.0956 equals 1.71. That is a bigger number. Okay. Um, and then the mean, uh, the four baskets below, of the four different baskets. Okay. Um, I'm going to put some other value in here too. See if I can fool it into thinking I calculated it. And then I'm going to put, uh, oh, I hope that this works. I'm just gonna guess something just to get past here. It's it's not gonna let me go. Well, I think if I do it three times, it'll actually let me go. It does. Um, so this asks you to click one of these radio buttons and then you can, um, uh, there's some data here you can do. I'm gonna just click this three times and just get past this because it's not correct. Um, and then it tells you some more about stuff. And then when you're done, you can, it tells you so that you know you're finished. There's no, and you can close the tab at that point. So uh, that's how you do it. I'll, I, if you have trouble with the math in this one, I can do a, a video specifically showing you how to solve some of these things, but I want you to try to do it first. And I'll probably try to do these for the first two or three labs. And then I'll stop making demonstrations after that because uh, it's supposed to get uh, easier for you. So anyway, uh, take care. Bye-bye.